Welcome to the full Sri Lanka experience. Going to some of the best beaches, into the mountains and into some places that I have to say don't look nothing like Sri Lanka. If you're planning to travel to the country or you just want to see some unique sides of it, this is the full travel itinerary over one month. I'll make sure to leave timestamps for you below if you're interested in a particular part. And with that, join me on one of the most beautiful islands in the world. So, welcome to Sri Lanka paradise, guys. I am right now by the beaches. We are on the south coast. You hear the ocean, you hear the waves. And I have to tell you, I've been in this area before once. I stayed in the town of Veligama, stayed in the town of Marissa, a couple of days in Ahangama, which I am pretty much right now on the outskirts of Ahangama. And I have a scooter on me. And I thought, hey, let's drive through these cities. Let's relive it a little bit. So at this point, it has been, woo, waves coming in. It has been over a year ago that I've been in this area. And I have to tell you, some towns I like much, much more than others. And today I want to share with you some honest thoughts. Also take it, just take you along on a little bit of a, a road trip experience, probably for some of the main towns here on the south coast that most people go to. And they're quite different. Starting with Ahangama, might be my favorite. But let's drive through Ahangama, then we'll go Veligama, Mirissa, maybe go even further, Matara. Have not been there yet. So let's hop on the scooter. And let's see what the south coast has to offer around here. Ahangama city. So I have to tell you, you see it. It's still kind of like a very much local village, but they're building some of the nicest cafes, little hotels, I'll say. Pretty much in all of the beach towns I have seen so far in Sri Lanka. So basically here, House of B or something. Lots of nice little cafes, but the street itself is fairly unassuming until you get down to the beach. Let's see, a little path through here. So this is what this place is all about. So last time I've been in Ahangama, it was actually fairly quiet. Right now, super busy, end of February, early March. I think it's pretty much still the season. And I have to tell you, depending on the day, obviously waves, things like that. One of the beach, uh, best beaches in all of Sri Lanka. Let me park my shoes down here for a second. Today the water is quite high, so depending, sometimes more waves, sometimes less, but super nice, fine sand. And what you probably see behind me right now is all the different cafes. Really good food, quite pricey actually, like main courses go for around 10 bucks. So for Sri Lankan standards, it's like a little bit more expensive than usual, but you have an amazing beach. The best coffee I've had in Sri Lanka, it's not always that easy to find it. And I would say it's my favorite. That's why I chose it as a base. It's a little bit more expensive, all of the accommodation here. Not much, but a good bit. And there's kind of like no really mid-range. It's almost like either like some fancy boutique hotels or guest houses, which are also a bit more expensive than usual. But I would say a little bit Bali vibes. I think it might get overdeveloped quite soon, but for now, super comfy, super nice vibe. I like the crowd. Still a nice mix of also local people, but yeah. Here we go, so here's all the different cafes. So for now, just a stopover because I've already spent the last four or five days here. Let's check out the other towns. I have to say, morning swim here, the best. Okay, so one thing about Ahangama that probably most people don't realize when they come here is that, yes, fancy cafes, this and that, but it's one of actually the lesser developed and up and coming towns. And also the village itself, if you drive up the road, it's very kind of provincial. I've been inside of Sri Lanka and it looks very similar. Whereas like the other towns, they're a bit more developed, bit bigger cities here. Beautiful village, a couple of fancy houses, but mostly people living here still like a long time ago. And I love driving through here personally. This place 
is called The Lighthouse. So it's kind of like a pretty nice boutique hotel. They made it up really nice. Uh, so a couple of fancy boutique hotels here a year ago, staying next door at a place called The Hotel. Very nice also. Uh, but here first thing, I like the ambience. Very, let's say, simple, but you get to enjoy the view. So we're gonna have a little coffee, refuel, and then hit the road. He is terrible, I don't recommend it, but food must be good. Corn? Nice and hot. Uh, 100? How much? 100. Sorry? 100. 100, perfect. Uh, do you want one? Let's do one or two? Okay, we'll do one. One, please. Ooh, hot pot by the side of the road. Very nice. So, a little stop over in the town. One of the biggest, actually. The Liga. Oh, let's go down to the beach. So, I have to tell you, I've been living on the outskirts of it for like around a week last time. And the city itself, not my favorite, I would say it's the busiest in terms of surf schools everywhere, lots of people, development's a little bit older, so I like local cafes, but there's also many like kind of older, very touristy cafes. And uh, overall, I think if you choose it as a place to stay, uh, can be nice if you have a scooter, it's a great location to go to all the other towns. And honestly, the morning walks you can have here and I had here, quite amazing. I think it's one of the very few towns that actually has like some bigger hotels i think that, that's yeah that's the marriott right there and very wide coast a very wide beach personally i found it not the most peaceful place just because of how many people are here how much offerings there is and mostly it looks kind of like that the beach lots of boats i like the fishermen around here that kind of like adds to it but if you go all the way back it gets a little bit more peaceful so just passing through a little bit uh, it really depends on your taste. If you like it to be a little bit bigger, if you don't care about it kind of like being more cozy, more comfy, like whatever, if you don't care about... Um, kind of like, I also like the cafes from the perspective of sitting down, doing a little bit of work in Ahangama. Here, much, much harder. There is a nice place, the Outpost. Uh, decent Wi-Fi, it's kind of like a co-working, co-living situation type of thing. But yeah, that's Veligama. Just gonna go for a bit of a walk and then head out. like it all right now we'll stop over at the go to supermarket in Sri Lanka most big cities have them it's called food city so getting some amazing Sri Lankan ice cream just a little snack a couple of calories and heading to the city of Matara five minutes away never been before wanted to check it out all of the towns like 50 minutes apart from each other so past Marissa gonna go there on the way back if you check out on the map all easily accessible and uh, yeah loving the fact that they have this food city everywhere Hello. and so i would say truly sri lanka we are in the town of matara seen it many times on the map even seen some accommodation around here, but never peaked my eye too much. And I have to say, nice beach as always, but it's a very different vibe. It's completely local. I don't see any foreign tourism, which is quite interesting, definitely. So they have like some type of interesting bridge going to an island with a temple. But yeah, that's Matara. Uh, total 35 minute drive from Ahangama. Nice coast, couple of hotels, churches. And this thing over there. So walk towards the temple in the water. And the funny thing is I've seen this thing on the internet. That was the reason why I wanted to stop by here. And what I've seen was a bridge going across the water. The bridge that is in the water these days. So that is quite interesting. Looks like the bridge 
broke. Still pieces of it are in the water. But they got this other nice walk. I don't know when they set it up, but yeah. Very beautiful place on top of an island. They built this column. And uh, yeah, a lot of people go there. Cool town, I would say worth visiting, but uh, perhaps further in the back, it's a little bit more chill. Very busy here, don't see much accommodation, but it was interesting to find out what's down here. Big city, also there's a train station here, just bought tickets. If you wanna buy first class, not every station sells them, basically just like air conditioned class at the end of the day, but yeah. And so guys, there we go. This is the town of Marissa. Stayed here as well, was actually the very first place on the south coast that I've been to, you as well, right? So, the little side streets of Marissa, fairly cozy town, a bit more affordable than Ahangama, in some ways kind of like a mix of Ahangama and Veligama, where we have been was the second stop. So I personally like it, I was even considering to stay here again. Um, it's kind of like a mix, more families, but also still nice cafes, pretty nice beach, a little bit busier overall. And I'm going to the secret beach right now. That's where we're headed. Five minute drive. And then probably afterwards it's gonna go down for sunset. We'll show you the beach as well. There is some. Sounds cute. <laughs> Ooh, been a hot day so far. Made it into Marissa Secret Beach. It's a very local area, so here we parked down our scooter at the local house for 300 rupees, which is probably the most expensive parking you can hear of. It's a dollar. Let's let's keep it here, and uh, yeah, should be like five minutes walk down the road. We have everything. I'm tired. secret beach as you can hear it's not that secret it's always quite packed the second time or third time i'm here but especially during the day it looks really really cool so the thing about this beach is it's kind of like two bays on the one side it looks like this then in the middle there's this little island area and palm trees all around it so the secret beach Let me be very honest with you. It's a very busy beach. The secret beach behind me. But aesthetically it's really cool and especially when the sun is still a little bit higher. The water is clear, crystal clear basically back there. You kind of still see it. Back there is a little bit deeper. Some people doing snorkeling. So when I was staying in Marissa, I stopped by here sometimes. There's another way to drive in. You can get a bit lower, but yeah. I like this spot. There's barely usually people here until they see you, then everybody comes and joins you because they're like, oh, oh, that's where the action's going on. We'll feel the energy. So I would say let's go down here. Let's go for a little dip and then I'll relax and doze into sunset. Or maybe let's get the bird out. Slightly out of context, we're showing all the different beach towns today. I don't think I have a full video about this place in me right now, but the town of Hikaduva, very, very busy. I think is one of the first actually kind of like established towns by the coast. But I wanted to use this chance also to show you a little bit how you can get a great experience in Sri Lanka. Somewhat, yeah, not very much on a budget. So last minute decided to come here and this is the place I'm staying. Just take it in for a second and tell me what you think how much it is. Room I'll show you in a second. Pretty nice. Beach view. Actually I booked one with balcony but then it wasn't available. A common thing. You book something. It has been still listed but actually it's not available. Beachfront. Back there we're seeing turtles. Maybe I'll get around to show you a shot of that as well. Huge turtles. 
and so basically i think they have like maybe 10 rooms you got these super nice coconut trees and i only booked first one night because in sri lanka is not that easy like sometimes the pictures don't really show the reality sometimes the pictures are bad but the place is good and the other way around so 20 dollars for 20 dollars i'm staying here for a couple of nights in the town of hikadua uh, very busy lots of uh, russian speakers i'd say mostly also judging by the fact that all the menus and everything is in the russian but um yeah let me show you the room 20 bucks seriously Probably one of the best values I've ever had. And to give you a quick idea of the room, obviously as well, very messy. Not very. Bathroom. So honestly, a very simple guest house, but they did put in some like nice light. Have a little table, and the best part is this. I mean, seriously, the best part is this. <laughs> So one thing that this place is very famous for is the Turtle Bay. It says in its word what it is. It's uh, a place with quite a few turtles. More people around it, of course. But it's really cool. I've never seen a turtle so close up. So let's see if they're still there. Saw them in the morning. Let's go. turtles here and uh, around 20 homo sapiens around it how do you like Hikadovsky? What, what? Hikadovsky? yeah very nice very nice place Really cool thing here in Hikaduva, my highlight. There's a lot of fruit stands, a lot of small markets, but this looks very nice. Uh, I'm like, let me show you guys this humongous fish. First of all, they have a shark here, of course. You have a shark on the table, and this is what I call a proper fish right there. Look at that little shark. You can uh, choose here, have you seen and the shark? They will cook it right the away. Shark. Yeah. This one was swimming next to us. Nice one. Humongous freaking shrimp. Now that's what I call a shrimp. Elephant shrimp. Yeah. 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 So proper, pretty huge fruit market, I gotta say. The most proper one I've seen so far, probably. It's the Pineapple King and Durian King. Is it good? Yeah. Nice. You wanna get two? This today. This today. So grab one star fruit. You want some mangosteen? Let's get some mangosteen as well. Today we go. Oh, round two. Is good? Yeah. Got a couple of. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm How many bit? Yeah. Mm. One more. They're all good to eat already. Mangosteen. They're ready to eat. Yeah. Perfect. So, we're rich. Yeah. What is durian good for? Sex for karoji. Sex for haroji? Yeah. Karoji. Karoji? Karoji, sex for Okay. 
So, so, so it's good for, for sex, yeah? Video okay. Good. Okay, you sold me, I take it. Thank you. I take it. <laughs> so let's eat the durian house, eh? <laughs> Oops. First time trying to do Nice. My brother? Yeah. You saved the night, thank you. <laughs> so, a big fruit purchasing day. So I've been seeing durian in Thailand and Malaysia. She was like, let's try it. I'm like, it's 15 bucks for a fruit that smells like <laughs> bum. Uh, it tastes nice in some ways, interesting. I've only tried it in Bali once or twice. But in Bali it was like 8 bucks, 10 bucks for like a medium sized fruit, small fruit, kind of like the same size. In Thailand they charge you like 20, 30, same as in Malaysia. Here right now I have paid a little bit over $3 for a full durian. Left Cupid the little tip, little Cupid back there. <laughs> Good sales strategy, seriously, what an epic market. Probably best market in Sri Lanka so far, right? No? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Let's have arrived. Let's go try the durian. Yeah. Let's go. Look at this beautiful house, guys, also. Colonial house. Amazing. like an embryo yep tastes like durian <laughs> the place we're gonna be going today I think is gonna be very special I don't even know exactly what you expect two three hour train ride we should get on a tuk tuk or a taxi and go deep into the mountains Meet you. Uh, secure this type of gym. You can go mm -hmm. Perfect. Room. I'll check it out. Where are we? Seriously. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to see more of Sri Lanka. So after a fairly long road in the morning, I have to tell you. Whew, however, I'm gonna call this video whatever. Like this is heaven, hidden paradise. No, seriously, so we're in the candy area and we're overlooking the mountain range the weather is absolutely perfect and over the next uh what is it like yeah three days i'm gonna show you around the arunia resort and spa and i have to tell you sri lanka is probably world famous from all the places i've been from all the places i've covered on the channel in terms of let's say nature boutique kind of like very special experiences it just seems to me sri lanka has very special places and this place I think they have nine villas all of them are facing the mountain range and what's the first thing that surprised me I mean you see all around me is 
I don't hear and I don't see anybody. So there's so much greenery. I don't even know yet where the villas are. We're gonna explore over the next couple of days. So first night we're staying over here. Let's be, oop, okay. Oh, <laughs> let's be a little bit on the edge here. So what we're looking at is first of all, you have a nice little pool. We're in candy, but during the day it still can get pretty hot, I think up to 30 degrees, depending on the season. In the evening, it's actually nice and cool, like in Colombo and the on the coast. It's still a little bit sticky in the evenings when you're here in a warmer season. But here, weather is a little bit more, uh, a bit colder in the evenings. I'm blown away, seriously. Let's get it. I'm seeing a monkey on a tree. Wow, mango looks good. Do mangoes grow around here? No, we huh? buy from the market. Yeah, like market, I mean like uh, candy area? Yeah, yeah, or? Candy yeah, area. yeah, nice, nice. So, breakfast has arrived. Here from the Sri Lankan mountain paradise, guys, I have to tell you what a vibe. The sun does really peek out from the mountains and also the moon does that was actually quite crazy last night i think it was full moon or almost full moon yesterday and uh, yeah let's kick off the experience here a little bit so earlier in the morning woke up got a little bit of a workout in which i didn't expect it to have a nice small little gym like any equipment when you're out in the jungle is super nice to have and uh, yeah perfect weather i think right now is quite the season for that so and it's already a little bit after 11, bit of a late start. Decided to have the breakfast in the room and what a breakfast it is. So as you see, as in German you would say, we listen here nichts anbrennen. Whereas in Russian you would say, ach we what a breakfast. <laughs> uh, so basically, I always like to like try both options or however options they have. Went for one Western or English breakfast, they like to call it here, and one Sri Lankan one. So got a nice scramble, a little bit of eggs, a little bit of um let's see what type of smoothie. Mango. I think. Mango, maybe a little bit of banana, nice and creamy. Beautiful local mango. Just talked to the guys when they came in. What is this? Um, it's uh, like oatmeal, it's Greek yogurt, something sweet. Mm -hmm. mm, I have no idea what is it. Yeah, it's some type like of roti. pancakes, pretty cool. And a little bit of bread, so... Gonna be having breakfast. Enjoy this room a little bit because they don't have that many villas and the availability is fairly limited. So I was like, hey, well, if this room is not available for the whole time, let's check out the other ones. And this one, I think, is super nice because it's very, very secluded. You don't hear anybody, you don't see anybody. You want to run around naked here, use the whirlpool. You may do that. I mean, I would never do that, of course, but yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be moving, basically. That's the basic gist of the story. I have not seen that much yet, so I want to take you for a bit of a tour. There's tea plantations around here, and actually the main building, the lobby, used to be a British colonial structure. I'm going to talk about all of that a bit later. Let's eat. A quick word from my favorite video sponsor, Level 8 Luggage. So guys, if you are planning a trip anytime soon, you know, one of these might come in handy. I've been rolling with the carry-on suitcases for almost a year, also have a check luggage, and I have to tell you, quality is really out of this world, especially the aluminum suitcase, but they also have more affordable options on the website. For the longest time, I've been always a carry-on guy, just makes everything so much convenient, but also they have different checked luggages and as of right now you can get 15% off with my code Danny15. I'll make sure to put it on here. So in terms of the organization, the design, how it looks, check out level 8. I'll make sure to leave everything in the description together with a code for 15% off. And so yeah, let me know what piece you might end up getting. Mm, some guys were texting me they got the same one. They were very happy with it and uh, yeah, I can see why. 
Alrighty guys, so to summarize, they do worldwide shipping. US and Europe is completely free, but no matter where you are, you can get your hands on a level eight. And instead of going through a bunch of low quality luggage, I highly recommend investing in a high quality piece. Let me give you a proper idea of where we are right here. So, huge pool right next to the lobby. Let's see if we can, oh, yep, and it's warm. Obviously, it's quite surprising. We're in the mountains, it's 30 degrees. It feels pretty much as hot as it feels when you are on the coast, which is really nice, actually. So I mean, it's like a mix of mountain and tropical. And also yesterday I talked to the owners here and he told me a little bit the backstory of this place. So I think I mentioned before, Arunia stands for kind of like the sun rising, which happens behind those mountains in the back. And basically it's a family business. His father started it with uh, his uncle together and they're all the time kind of like building little new villas, new concepts. I'm very excited to see the next place we are gonna be staying at and it's very much an eco resort so they're growing a lot of their own tea there's different plantations around here hopefully we can get a bit of an idea around it and it's very much kind of like you have everything that you need even as i mentioned have like a gym everything is uh, yeah very much luxury but at the same time it's about the setting it's about the nature the weather kind of changes every hour or two like especially in the evenings a little bit of clouds rolled in at night it's actually fairly chilly during the day it's super tropical and then uh, yeah i think basically there's a lot of different winds blowing around here so you really feel the difference throughout the day sweet is my location sweet as well my destination if you're looking to begin then look no further than within I'm satisfied with what I've got and still eager for more. Hello, little friend. Just sitting there chilling. I've also got some watermelon. Juice, everything nice and fresh. Fruits from the region and lunchtime. Decided to have it by the pool. Just ask for this table over there, getting hungry. After lunch right now, going for a tour around the hotel, around the areas, went to the rice fields, and our guide is telling us a little bit about that all over. Basically there's fruits, vegetables, tea, all over the property and outside, so a lot of things are growing themselves, and uh, yeah. White tea, green tea, flavor tea, all the tea we are making from young leaves. So this is tea here, yeah? This is the one mostly we are taking a peak like that. Ooh. With the, on the top uh, part. First, you, when you bite it, you can feel the, like a very sour taste. Okay. Okay, then bitter. Finally, we can taste uh, like sweet when you drink some water. Do you, so it is, do, you do something with that? Uh, we do. Some of We make some of herbal things, which mm -hmm. is good for the eyes and hair. Okay. Yeah. And the Indian people, they make curry. Very Curry famous, very famous in between the Indian people. Uh, that's one actually. So there's a red one, yeah? The red one, yes. So you said the potato is poisonous? The potato means, this is yam actually, uh -huh. this is the yeah. wine. Okay, when we take off the wine, we can get something like a ginger, like a potato uh -huh. inside. Yeah. Okay, the yam. So when you eat it, that part, you will die. Okay. The local name we call Niangala, the botanical name we call uh, Gloroisa, and uh, Flame Lily. The very uh -huh. famous name in between the people, flame lily. You can see that like a, like a lily flower. All right, flaming. <laughs> so don't eat all the potatoes you find. You're drinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I had some wine in the room, gonna take that with us. Keras light tank, pool light sir. Pool light, okay. Yes, light, mm -hmm. pool light. Perfect. Here we are. Let me show you around. Nutmeg is the name of the game. Natalia was surprised of how different this concept is. 
So coming in, the first thing you probably see, it's a tent. So they call this place the tented villa. And I have to tell you inside, it's nice. It's really cool. We have again, Animal Planet on TV, my absolute favorite. So nice little sofa, super cozy bed, got a lamb, got the fridge, also air conditioning here. It's really hot outside right now. But I have to tell you the most epic part about this whole thing is the view. So what we saw, oh, there's a squirrel, there's a squirrel on the balcony. <laughs> Look at that. Squirrel is gone. Go. Okay, back to action. So the view in the room previously was already amazing. It was very secluded here actually under us. There's the villa uh, next to it. Still quite a lot of privacy, but not completely secluded like the other one. But I have to tell you the panoramic view that you get up here is absolutely unbelievable. So here the view is even more unobstructed. You get pretty much the 180, if not even more degree view. You see mountains in the back, the whole line of them. Here the vegetation a little bit different. Also got palm trees, coconut trees, but always the test. Do I fall down or not? Everything seems stable. The pool here actually looks even more swimmable in the sense that it has some bubbles going on. It's a little bit larger and you have the direct access from your room over there. But that's not it. There's also, let's see, can I climb over here? There's also a bathtub here in the corner. Check this out, guys. So basically the water is coming out from here. Fairly large size, easily can fit in two people and another highlight i would say is the bathroom it's just really cool how basically here it's open you see some coconut trees for yourself when you're doing your business <laughs> and the uh, nice two washers so i have to say for me personally the first room was really nice very comfortable but this is an absolute experience also like kind of like the chairs here everything feels a little bit more safari a little bit more jungle and seriously just sitting down here this is what you get um, basically the main lobby that i just showed you used to be uh, kind of like a building from the british during the colonial times it's kind of like where they have been uh, controlling the tea region from here and they kind of like uh, use that structure to build their lobby and then build these villas around it so it's a really cool family-owned business but at the same time kind of like a little bit of a history behind it and they also kept uh, from what i heard all the tea trails around it the really cool thing is that they're really doing so much around here with what they're growing bananas mangoes avocados pepper coffee cinnamon nutmeg it's just what I can get off the top of my head. So a really nice tour by one of the workers here who actually used to work as a guide, uh, kind of like a nature trail guide also in terms of the birds, so many different birds that he's actually able to point out, which you kind of like don't pay attention to yourself. I just see the huge eagles, that's what I'm into. But yeah, very interesting little insights. Also found myself here to like this little island and uh, yeah. Sunset in Sri Lanka are always crazy, but in the mountains, I feel like they even hit a bit harder. You're seeing the whole mountain range in the evening, kind of like see all the layers and um, yeah, gonna be calling it a day for today. Gonna have dinner in a bit. Slowly, slowly, it's getting dark. Uh, today is the first day with no sick sunset. It's also the last day, but it's far from over yet. So, as you say, every time it's like a hike here. It's not, it's very short, but uphill. Um, going to the spa. They have Balinese and Sri Lankan massage, Ayurveda, something like that. Uh, Sri Lankan is supposed to be more relaxing. The Balinese one, they should knit you up a bit more. So, we're going for that one. One hour and then. There should, should be traditional Sri Lankan mud house dinner. I have no idea what to expect, but excited. Let's go. And we only have one bathroom. <laughs> How are you doing there? 
feel it. Yeah. All right, see you later. Usually that's my job, huh? <laughs> All right, you're in good hands. Good now. They feel like they had the proper therapy. Yeah. How do you like it? It was good. You said she was harder. I should have taken her then, but okay. Yeah. I thought I would take the bigger. Ooh, that was. Honestly, I'm usually not too fond of hotel massages. They're usually like very relaxing, oils, this and that. Pretty strong, pretty good. You said yours was really strong. Yeah. So I guess I chose the wrong girl. I was like, go with the one that looks a bit stronger, but looks like yours were the... And now we have received the Sri Lankan carpet to fly off. <laughs> So yours already you weren't sure how to put on. I have no idea what to do with that. I'm sure the guy is going to help us out. Yeah. All right. We'll figure that out in the restaurant. We're going right now to what they call traditional mud house dinner. Excited. Got a couple of shots for you. Let's go. Last night. This is a kind of Arak cocktail. Uh -huh. We make that. Uh, is that from the tree also? Uh, <laughs> no, this is from the coconut flavor. Ah, mm -hmm. nice. Coconut flavor, coconut Arak, the mm -hmm. local tradition part. That's really uh, very good. Most very like a very famous in between the local peoples. We call gal. <laughs> gal. Yeah. When you go to the local bar, you can ask where what is the gal. So mm -hmm. they will show you the bottle of gall. Okay. <laughs> so nice. the traditional coconut arak Great. with uh, lemon and fashion fruits with a little sugar syrup and lime all together as a cocktail. You can have it. After then we can uh, start to go from here to our Perfect. Mm -hmm. Right? We are the right. security in, Great. in front and behind. Who are we going to shoot? Uh, just elephant and tiger on the way. Who is the enemy of Sri Lanka? <laughs> no, actually, no enemies? Enemies we had before. Who was that? Uh, the Tamil tiger. No, no yeah. more enemies. Okay, let's shoot the Tamil <laughs> yes. tiger then. This is not for tiger actually. This yeah. is we give some of experience. Mm. So when we do this kind of uh, things in the jungle, we don't have a clear path at the previous time. I'm talking about long time ago. Our generation people, when they go in front mm -hmm. of, they will have, they will having always this kind of gun, oh. shotgun, and uh, this is the light things they will make from the coconut leaves. Mm -hmm. Then they will light in front of who will come behind. They will get the light from that coconut leaves. They will burn like that. So oh. this is the one normally we try to explain to you. We try to give the experience nice. when you go from here to that place. Okay. I don't think they have an elephant actually. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Good evening. We don't start anything else and uh, we will light the oil lamp. So mm -hmm. this is our kind of tradition part. So I would like to invite for you to come and candle it, light it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we light it or? Yeah, yeah, you should do it. One by one. So what do I light? In the mud house, it started to rain. What a vibe! So, been escorted with flames, even had a gun. I don't know, 
if it's loaded, but what definitely is loaded are the flavors out here. I didn't expect, so it's kind of like very, very traditional old school Sri Lankan cooking. Very strong flavors, just like some soup with crab. Here we have um, jackfruit, cassava. There's two men playing traditional Sri Lankan music. Let's eat. Is my location sweet as well my destination if you're looking to begin then look no further good uh, morning and what a morning it is the first kind of cloudy misty one also getting to experience the scenery in a more yeah moody vibe let's say so yesterday was a bit cloudy in the evening so that's why you get this really different kind of um, basically the clouds between the mountains looks really cool the sun is peeking up it's be behind the cloud right now so there's these uh, light rays of light and uh, yeah so it has been like three days here at this place it's probably a long video i have to tell you uh at first i was like wow this place is incredible the um, first room already really impressed me but i was thinking it's more about kind of like the overall package, the overall experience, the nature, because it's still fairly minimalist. But then when we moved over to this place, I was like, wow, this is actually really, really unique. It's kind of like, I don't know, just the whole concept. It's a tent, but you don't really feel it. At the same time, you're kind of like out in nature here. And um, let's say it like that. The food was different. I don't know if they have multiple different cooks, but either it was good or it was extremely good. The Sri Lankan food yesterday really surprised me because um, I expected it to be simple, but they actually made it like authentic, but at the same time also like really, really good. Probably some of the best Sri Lankan food I've ever had. Also the whole experience, the men playing. And uh, yeah, big shout out, big compliments to the guy that took care of us last few days, um, Nomal. He's like, normal, like normal, normal, that's his name. So he was giving us a bit of a tour, showed us the nature around here. That's what you saw in the video. And overall, really took care of us. And I have to tell you, probably one of the most unique experiences in the world. It's not like a, you know, big hotel experience resort with a bunch of people and uh, you go to your breakfast buffet, it's very, boutique very secluded very natural at the same time i think there's monkeys down there so one actually yesterday if i'm not gonna fall off right here but yeah so if the next video is coming everything's good till next time the sri lanka candy to ella train guys short timing we're tight. We're heading to the train station, going to a place in Sri Lanka I've never been before. From one of the most beautiful places probably in all of Sri Lanka. Let's go. So we're right now in the Arulia Resort, heading out. The train is in an hour. Whew. have a nice Arunya Kenji Sri Lanka book. This book and pencil are handmade with love from locally sourced natural and recycled materials. Whoa. Alrighty guys, so here we are. Kenji train station. Um, let's say like that. I think this train, which is going to LA, is one of the most popular ones. First class, I think it's a bit hard to get. Usually I'm not too far in advance. But coming from the hotel in the mountains, I didn't want to risk, let's say, not getting a ticket at all. Uh, usually you can always get like second class, third class standing, but then you're gonna stand there for six hours. Uh, it looks actually pretty busy here at the station, so what I did is I bought the tickets through a travel agency the hotel connected me with. And already the guy at the hotel was like, oh yeah, they do crazy prices. So I would be actually curious if anybody knows this ticket here. Uh, it's third class reserved seat, so we're gonna have an assigned seat, but also mm, it costs like $14. I know regular like uh, 
ticket probably would be a dollar or so. Maybe reserved seats probably a good bit more. But yeah, paid 14 bucks for that ticket. Still obviously very good to have. Just pretty much paying for the peace of mind in this case. Usually I'm a bit more, yeah, whatever. Gonna stand, gonna fly, gonna hang off the wagon, whatever it may be. It's gonna work, but uh, yeah, made sure. You're gonna have a seat, six hour ride to Ella. A place I've never been to before. Uh, been in, uh, oh, this, this thing just pooped a good load. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Last time I was in Sri Lanka, I didn't want to do that long train ride, but let's see. It was 2,400, which is like um, $8. I paid 28 It's a $10 booking fee for them. God bless. Peace of mind fee. What do you think? Crazy. Scan? No, I think it's fine. Ten dollars. Alrighty, so back there is very busy. Here is nice and quiet and looks usually really good. camera crew this is how the seating area looks so we're sitting over there and honestly so you cannot really doors closed here you cannot really tell properly which class it is so to say so there's no air conditioning here but open windows ventilator should be a nice breeze and uh, honestly this is more expensive I, for me it was more expensive than the first class and uh, there's like six seven dollars but first class big air conditioning cabin in here it's very nice i think it depends on the condition of the train this one seems to be in here at least this cabin yeah. little bathroom check so all right and my camera crew is here as well they're shooting a documentary on me. It is the camera inception. So they're shooting a movie on caffeine addiction. And, um, I'm guilty. Good to have, we're paying for it, but uh, it's a fairly small, so I think I'm on a little bit um, tight. Standing on the horse, hanging out a little bit. So the scenery is not really something else. So there's not like one place that is like particularly scenic, mostly. Some less, some more. town of Ella. I have to tell you the ride was a bit longer than expected. I think over six hours from Candy. Uh, very very scenic. People are extremely excited on the train so in some ways I would call it the tourist trap in the sense that it's filled. Not like the Candy train, not like the other ones, not like the coast trains. Uh, everybody tries to get the legendary train shot which I got out of my system the first time I was in Sri Lanka. Uh, so be ready, be ready. It's a beautiful ride, one of the most scenic rides in the world probably as i said before there's like no one place where i'm like oh my god there's the highlight multiple waterfalls tea plantation so much but yeah let's get it going let's walk check in somewhere and then we're gonna see what ella is about Alrighty, so just dropped off the luggage at the first hotel that looked decent next to the train station not gonna be here for long mainly came to see this epic legendary bridge 
but it's still not too late. The weather looks nice, so let's head out. Let's see what Ella is all about. The schedule is a little bit tight in Sri Lanka, mostly focusing on like different, let's say, secluded areas, but I'm sure it's a great city. It's very, very popular as you have seen from the train station. So let's see what's going on here. Okay, all right. So first of all, I haven't seen anything of the city, but coming in reminds me a bit of Ubud on Bali, just kind of like a street passing through, typical Sri Lanka style, one way there to cafe. Look actually pretty good. Let's go. So the last time I was in Sri Lanka, this was one of the few towns I didn't feel like taking a long train ride to. Uh, I was. I was pretty sure it's gonna be a sick ride, but it was nine hours from Colombo. I decided to go to the beaches. So I'm very happy to go here. Afterwards, gonna be going to the city of uh, Nurulia, but I have to say, I can see why it's so popular. Like it's very developed in the sense of a really nice, large cafe, chill cafe. And tourism is probably the most busiest I have seen in all of Sri Lanka so far. Like yes, on the coast, mostly tourism, obviously, but it's the beach, you know? And even if you walk on the street, here it feels like 80 90 percent are people and i would say the biggest reason is the nine arc bridge which we're definitely going to go to the other one there's supposed to be some waterfalls and generally the whole region it's kind of cooler like walk around i guess would be like 24 25 degrees so not cold still can keep it nice and unbuttoned tropical we got a roll to see style uh, but uh, also the scenery like you're seeing pretty much large mountains yeah i have to tell you it really reminds me of Ubud, like souvenir shops, of course the tricycle that's a purely, especially those ones, the way they look. In every country kind of like different. And what I find is actually quite interesting is that I feel like the name Tuk Tuk got popularized through the Thai Tuk Tuk. And I find that in recent years they called them Tuk Tuk all over. But I guess tricycle is how you call it, nice big healthy dog. So let's see, there's supposed to be some waterfall down the road, later probably sit down in one of those cafes. Yeah, I have to say, in terms of the tourism infrastructure, it's actually pretty nice. Like, I already saw four or five places I would sit down in. So let's see what else we can find here. A super mall. Let's get a drink. I would say the train ride overall, to summarize that, I think the first class experience is definitely, I'm sure it's nicer. Air conditioning is nice to have in the first part. Actually, then it gets pretty chilly. I had to put the, my shirt back on. And um, the third class reserved is actually really nice. I don't know if all the trains are new like that, but actually it surprised me in many ways. Uh, as I said, I probably overpaid majorly for it. I saw on the ticket around $10, but I think it was uh, worth it because just stopped by the train station. And there it said that uh, no reservations until Friday. So for the next three days, cannot buy reserve tickets in the next couple of days going to be going to a different town probably we'll have to either get a taxi or most likely stand in the train so just a couple of steps outside of the city we're starting to see the scenery mountains rocks Whew. Pretty, pretty nice. So, 20 minute walk, could take a tuk-tuk as well, but um, it's downhill. Don't know how we're gonna get back up, but let's see. Hello, hello. How much to nine arches? It's 2,000. How much? 2,000. No, that's crazy. You want to go and come back or this one? One way. One day it's 1,000. 1,000? Yeah, I don't know about that. We do 600. All right, thank you. morning the nine arches bridges adventure begins and i think the biggest adventure is getting there so the pick me up is corrupted you cannot order it some local drivers are accepting it then canceling it sending you awkward messages uh, it's interesting mm. and basically it's like what well, usually in sri lanka is a two three dollar tuk tuk ride easily goes up here to a ten dollar ride for like nine minutes so let's see what we can do I'd say like that, $4 is the budget. Five minute drive the road. That's a tourist town for you.
a good day. So how off of the tuk-tuk, 10 minute walk down he said. I feel like he drove us already pretty far, so a lot of people walking already. Nice guy, you know, that is the thing about when you're like in a very touristy town, it's just like you get on with the driver and you're like, ah, I don't know if this is uh, gonna end the way it should. So, uh, oh, there's some pick-me driver calling. So you see this one over there? Actually, I was planning to stay here, but yesterday when I arrived, already was a little bit later. I thought, hey, let's explore the city a little bit. And overall, with sort of complications, ways of getting around, um, I think it's the right choice. If you're only here for a couple of days, stay in the city, then get out here. Uh, but looks really nice, and honestly, the accommodation prices are pretty good in uh, Ella. Like, this would have been like 25 bucks or something. I mean, simple room, but still, the location. Yep, a couple of guest houses, and down we go. Down we go. Pretty simple hike. Sorry? Five minutes, I guess, yeah. So here we are. Approaching the bridge. I would say it looks somewhat how I expected. Obviously, it's not a huge bridge it's over a hundred years old built here by the British during their colonial empire and what I saw is that actually during that time because of the first world war they were missing a bunch of metals or let's say they used them differently <laughs> um, so it's a stone wall cement bridge and it looks really cool obviously as expected it's really nice and busy I guess everybody's waiting for the train Hope they will get off the rails by the time the train's here. But yeah, very, very picturesque. Gonna look for some nice angles. Uh, I think at 9, 6.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m. <coughs> and some other times the train is theoretically passing through. Let's walk on it a little bit, I guess. Ooh, it's a So let's see what we see from it. Kind of like one big rail in the middle passing through and what I heard is there's also a lot of bees around here so should be careful with like flying drones and stuff like that but yeah pretty cool palm trees no it's more like yeah, yeah palm trees all around it and a couple of little camps little cafes on the corners so yeah really not a big bridge but the fact that they kind of like build it off the two cliffs connecting it and the fact that yeah a hundred years ago this was just basically to transport tea people going back the train should pass by in like five minutes i have to tell you i would see this place as kind of like a photo postcard location absolutely aesthetic super nice got a history behind it but at the same time Probably every time the pass, uh, train passes through here, uh, it's mostly like a photo spot, like many of these places. If you have heard, if this is the first thing you find when you research a country, you always can expect a huge crowd, basically. But still, if you're in the area, I'm seeing all these guest houses around here. As I said, I actually plan to even to stay here, and I think this is the best way to go because if you stay here for two, three days, you're gonna see all the trains you want to see. Hang on your balcony. There's a little cafe might go up there. So I would say that's also usually my go-to with places like that. Set yourself up somewhere. Yep. So let's see what's going on here. So in many ways, I would say this is the go-to spot upstairs. People kind of standing in line, train just passed by. Really nice, I mean, it's like a 15 second experience at the end of the day. And I actually have to honestly say, even when the train is not passing, 
the aesthetics are real let's see if we can get some aerials out of this so i would say if you're like traveling sri lanka have a bit of an itinerary it's one of the stops you pass by see the train definitely worth it but at the same time for me that's what kind of why i didn't come last time it's mostly just for the photo of which i have plenty all right let's see pass through here oh busy traffic so over here right by the train some corn business going on nice on wood fire so. Whew. well that has been it little stop over in Della we're rolling out uh, I would say if you're on a trip in Sri Lanka probably one of the best places to come to just the ride the train ride here the scenery the bridge is legendary but it's one of those monuments you know that you have seen uh, it was a bit tricky to get some nice shots didn't fully get what I wanted but uh, life is long as I like to say and uh, generally I'm always a bit chill about different places second visit in Sri Lanka maybe I would say for me if I'm on a road trip have a car maybe nice motorbike this area definitely see myself exploring the next couple of years so, yeah. next up keep it a bit of a secret let's say it like that I don't call Sri Lanka the supreme tea leader for no reason see you in the next one Sri Lanka a country with truly lots of different sites yes we are on this tropical island wearing a sweater i didn't expect to get this out of the closet and we are in a part of the country that i think most people don't even realize exists when you think of sri lanka you think beaches you think maybe mountains but a place that is a little bit more cooler in its climate uh, also a very historical place we are in the city of nuarli and we're staying at Let's call it for what it is, like a, it's like a castle. <laughs> so this place, the Bellwood Amanoar. Today I want to take you along on a full experience. I would say a very special got a world to see experience. We are nestled on the hill overlooking tea plantations, um, horse racetrack. And this place, I've just arrived here an hour ago, seems truly, truly special. So, yeah, very peaceful place, different weather, different climate. This building itself is exactly 101 year old, so lots of history around here as well. I'm excited to explore all of that with you today. A fireplace in Sri Lanka. So got some nice chocolates here. Nicest key ever. And I have to tell you, I've seen that in Nuarelia there's a couple of these places, old uh, historical buildings and they make it into really special experiences so around the house there's like these nice balconies everywhere and as of right now it just came in I mean look at this palace here I am challenging you <laughs> to a duel so first thing I don't know I'm extremely impressed they have a I don't think I've ever seen such a big billiard table. I don't know if it's like a different type, if it's professional size. Oh, only you know the ones from the bars. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have scones, butter cakes, Swiss roll, chocolate chip, and mm -hmm. brown bread is tuna sandwich. Perfect. And the other one is egg sandwich. All right, thank okay. you very much. Just took a little bit of a tour through the property, got a bit of an understanding, and also generally the city of, just asked, Nuara Elia. Sometimes locals say it quickly, like Nulelia. I'm like, I'll find out how to say it. And uh, yeah, basically, especially during the British colonial time, all the tea plantation areas, uh, very famous for that. There's a lake in the middle. And generally, the city, I will also really very much want to discover the next couple of days. Maybe go up the mountains, definitely go to one of the tea factories around here. And that's pretty much what this place is very much about. There's a horse riding track right next to it and the building itself we just heard once again some type of um i forgot what did you say governor or i don't know Blake? no no the, who owned the building um. 
So basically before this was a residential building and a year ago they turned it into a hotel and you really see it. It's brand new, everything. And when you think about the building is exactly 101 years old. Well, could be confused for brand new, perfectly renovated. And uh, yeah, so there's the spa area, walked a little bit through the hallway. So it's not a big place, it's eight rooms, but that's what makes it also super cozy. And uh, yeah, came out to the field here for some tea got some sandwiches some british scone remember we looked up yeah. who made scones yeah and what were, was your guess uh something dutch yeah yeah i kind of had a feeling mm. oh yeah so i'm gonna have a little tea here the best sri lankan tea yes the best sri lankan tea yes okay <laughs> great do you prompt man Sorry? Ukraine. I originally. Good country, yeah. yeah. good country. Now it's very famous now. Ukraine, very everybody famous, think about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No really uh, beetroot. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. this is the main building from the side. It was a really nice road kind of like leading into it. And uh, yeah, what I also just heard is this is the coldest region in all of Sri Lanka. And honestly, I feel it's getting even cold in the sweater. So super aesthetic structure, here's like this nice driveway in and as mentioned you see the horses in the back are grassing and uh, yeah it's already soon gonna be sunset I think uh, I'm gonna have dinner and tomorrow is gonna be a busy day exploring the town I'll show you a bit more around here. Little England. So, guys, I'm always talking about the supreme tea leader. I don't know how I came up. Okay, I do know how I came up with it. There's the movie The Dictator. It's a funny one. Check it out. But, you know, I mentioned it in the previous video. All over the world, wherever I have been since I have visited Sri Lanka for the first time, I have noticed that the tea so often comes from Sri Lanka. Whether you are like in the West, you're in Europe, you're in freaking Ukraine, you open up a cupboard and you're seeing it's Ceylon tea. And uh, this tuk-tuk that is pulling up here right now is supposed to take us to one of the tea plantations, so Nula Liga, generally one of the biggest tea producers in all of Sri Lanka, probably hence also all of the world, so this man should show us a bit more about that. He's gone, all right. And all my worries I prepare for something new Where we are at a place that is called the, the Pedro Estate Driving in in a very humbly fashion They said they produce the cleanest and best tea in the world And honestly, I don't think you have to be humble if it's true And I believe it is honestly So the place looks absolutely amazing Here you see all the tea plantation There's a lake in the middle Here is the factory it says the champagne of Ceylon tea looks really really cool so excited to go in to see what it's all about here seriously now probably for the rest of my life whenever I'm gonna find tea in someone's cupboard I'm gonna be this annoying guy who's gonna be like I've been at the tea plantation seriously I wonder if I can buy some tea here as well I'm sure I can So oh, we're heading over to the factory. They said not allowed to film inside. They want to preserve the secrets. Just came out of the tea production. Much more old school than expected, but this place has been around since 18 something. And what I also just read on the sign is that this is the first original tea plantation in Sri Lanka, opened by James something. I'll show you, we'll walk by again. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there's much bigger plantations as well, but this is the OG. They do it the real way. That's pretty cool. And there's funny kids. So there it is. OG Mr. James Taylor, the goat of tea. In 1841, he started this. Beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
pretty good. Or as they say, the best tea in the world. Sweet is my location, sweet as well my destination. If you're looking to begin. So, taking a little walk through the tea plantation. So, you can also do like a tea plucking experience. <laughs> we had a volunteer, Pedro, over there. <laughs> uh, so, absolutely beautiful tea plantation. And uh, yeah, very cool experience for me. I've never been the biggest tea drinker. I always like it every once in a while. But honestly, considering green tea has quite nice caffeine content, it was kind of like getting off of coffee. And we'll see, we'll see. After being here, after feeling the soul and spirit of James Clare, was that his name? Uh, big blue tea. So I guess gonna shortly head back to the Bellwood. This morning I was in the gym and I tore something in my neck a little bit. I can barely move. And uh, I saw they have a spa. So I guess it's calling me and a sauna. So that maybe will fix it, hopefully. But seriously, these humongous tea plantations that go all the way up. Like, you know, you have the rice plantations in places like Bali and it looks very aesthetic. There's also like some areas where they're it's not much that going on. The most famous one, they're always full of people, but here it just feels so peaceful, so real. Ooh, love it. So you're plucking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Show us the leaves. And just put them in the pocket and then later we dry them and drink them. Thank you, bye bye. There's some type of helicopter up there. And to properly wrap this up, finally, let's go to the sauna. Lisa is also gonna get a little massage. Is that right? Yeah. So, let's see. There's like a little cottage next to the main building. Very nice. On the left is the pool. On the right is, as far as I believe, the massage rooms. Alrighty, guys. As you see, we made it into the spa area. I think it's gonna be really fogged up right now. This is the sauna. Nice little plunge pool. Nice steam bath. Oh, wow. The massage was also pretty good, especially like the head thing. I had a big headache after the gym. Lift the neck, heads up. So we got that. And there's the sauna going on. So, see you tomorrow morning for a little wrap up. What a couple of days in Lilia. Ooh, guys, good morning. Fairly nice and early. Slept really well, as you can imagine. And Decided to have the breakfast on the balcony and what a balcony it is, what a breakfast. So here's some eggs benedict, scrambled egg, a little bit of fruits, yogurt, nice, obviously tea from the region and uh, yeah, gonna be kidding off the day. So we're gonna be heading out in a little bit to explore the area in a very different way, I'm excited for it, but with that chance let me show you around a little bit. Uh, the room basically so my favorite part the terrace first of all the breakfast as you have seen it's a nice table during the day it's actually quite nice and warm 23 degrees a little bit chilly but the sun is heating you up a bit but the room is really something else so as i said it's called uh, we're being hosted by the bellwood and wood is really what it's all about so the furniture super nice and i like how they mixed it gray and brown pretty much all throughout the hotel very minimalist very fancy but at the same time also super cozy and kind of like old school you feel like in a little bit of a english old house i mean you probably have seen it on the drone shots like just posted on instagram somebody was like oh little england you know and uh, my second favorite part is i'm coming in and i'm seeing this i'm like okay probably decoration i turn it on something that looks like 
fire. So it's basically like a, it looks like a half digital heater. Heat is coming out from below, so especially in the evenings, that's really nice because it does get really quite chilly in the evenings. Bed is one of the most comfortable things I've ever slept on. Got these nice chandeliers and also a very, very nicely sized TV. Some hotels like to have the little Marshall boxes. I once stayed at the hotel, they had it and it sold me on it. And now I'm traveling with my own little Marshall box. So really good. And uh, yeah, to give you the other highlights, so this is a little bit of a changing area. Bonjour. Hello. All right. So this is the bathroom, what a masterpiece. So we got this nice bathtub and once again everything, even the toilet bowl is brown, got this nice shower, two sinks and uh, yeah, as I said, I'm going to be exploring a little bit the neighboring areas in a way that I think I've never, with the transportation, I think I've never used before. Very old school. I'm excited. <laughs> Got the horses in the back. Take one uh, a lamp. Right. Yeah. Thank, mm -hmm. you. Thank you. So I would say let's go a little bit into the tea plantation area, and uh, of course the transport is here. Different kind of transport, I would say. We got a black horse and a white horse with brown. Let's say... You're taking the white one? Yeah. I see. You excited? So we got the professional horse rider here. Not really. Nice, we got helmets. Thank you very much. So, truth be told, she has been on a horse a couple of times. I wasn't sure. Been around horse a lot. But I think I've never sat on one. Maybe as a kid. So, let's hope it will go well. So, I think we're going to go somewhere there in the tea plantation areas. Wow, wow, wow. All right, you ready? Let's go. Cute horses. So, I take the brown one. Uh huh. How do I get on? Yeah. Let's see, maybe you can hold this one yes. for me? All right. Yes. Yes. We are on. How are you up there? So, first time on a horse, nice and easy. Not too many instructions, just how I love it. Let's see. Horses look very healthy. This one's nice and brown. This one's absolutely beautiful. I think it's two females. Okay, you can look right. All right, girls. So I'm on the road with three girls. Let's go. Okay. You want only? Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. Only. Hold here. Mm-hmm. And off we go. Right. See you later. Okay, guys, and off we go. First on the road. We should get off it in a second. Excited for where we're gonna be going to. Lisa looks confident. I pretend to be. So we're good to go. So somehow we became the leader of the pack out here. My horse is coming out to smell something. All right, let's keep going. Woo, how are you doing up there? I've got the horses. Woo, let's go. Got the horses in the back, horse stack is attached, hat is matte black, got them shoes, them white not match. 
Riding on a horse, you can whip your Porsche. Oh no, Lisa is giving ideas my horse to go faster. And so, half an hour in, we're going up the hill to some kind of temple. And I have to tell you, the scenery looks already nice from the Bellwood, but wow, what we're seeing here, seriously, looks very picturesque. My first time on a horse, so I'm so far pretty happy. And uh, Lisa taught me a few tricks. So basically you pull this handle a little bit and you squeeze your legs to tell them to stop. This works. It seems like the younger horse is a bit more moody in the front, the blondie. Straight? Straight, yeah, straight. straight, yeah? Okay. So we're going straight. And look at that scenery, guys. We have mountains, we have tea plantations absolutely everywhere. I've seen big tea plantations before, but not that large. Not as far as the eye can The boss of tea, Sri Lanka. The change that you've been looking for will come knock on your door. On and on. So we made it up the mountain, slowly heading back. And we're seeing some type of temple statue. I don't know if it's still under construction, reconstruction. Looks epic. Yes, we will talk about it. But here we can't cross these mountains. I think we like. We are calling this the temple, you know, uh, the Buddhist temple. This one is a Buddhist. Uh, we are a, uh, we are Hindu, but uh, in Sri Lanka, Buddhist and Sri Lanka, Hindu and Buddhist and Christians, Muslim. The three people as yeah. But uh, this the only is a Buddhist Buddhist temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, we yeah. can see inside there. So arriving at the horse house, this horse is a bit excited, but happens to the best of us. Here's some little baby horses. Nice. Look at that. Oppa. Maybe he was so excited because we're passing through with the ladies. Seriously, out of all the things I've expected to do in Sri Lanka, this was not it. That's the first time, and uh, yeah, so far, feeling pretty confident. Bye bye, horse. Bye bye. Good Your job. Name, Island Queen. Sorry? Island Queen. Island Coin? Yeah, this Sri Lankan Queen. Uh huh. Island Coin. Nice. Yeah. Ooh. So that has been the horse experience for the first time I would say quite nice. We're here at the, I don't know how you call it, a horse house. Not to confuse with anything that sounds similar it's to all, that. All the uh, how, do you, how do you call the stables? Stables. 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 There's Perfect. The ring. Thank you. The ring. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. In morning time we are trotting on yeah. 10 round, 15 uh -huh. round like that. Okay. And after we are take to the track. Nice. To canter and uh, like a timing and this was my first time on the horse you know i don't oh. know anything so i feel good <laughs> uh hurts a little bit between the legs you definitely like yeah father is india mother is in sri lanka uh-huh thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. If you come again next time back in the casa i have to tell you what a unique experience first time sitting on a horse in this scenery especially also going them back and uh, what they told me is that uh, Sri Lanka is pretty much the only place in Sri Lanka where they do proper horse racing so really they have the racing horse we saw them in the I forgot about again the name where they keep the horses but um, in the stall basically and yeah back at the hotel gonna probably take you along for dinner right now yesterday I already had it. it's absolutely amazing there's also a bonfire place we'll see if we can get that on because already it's getting quite cold. I would say right now it's maybe like 18 degrees. It's gonna drop down to 14, which is seriously such a change. If you're traveling through Sri Lanka and you arrive here, you feel like you're in a different country. You just cannot tell exactly which one. And just also wandering around with the horses, what I've seen is that there's many old British colonial houses. Um, most are obviously 
don't look exactly like that one smaller and you really see how the time let's say how they live through a lot of time very interesting town saw the lake also pass by it from the hill beautiful so let's head to dinner Evening hours, they're starting the bonfire, which obviously at these temperatures is really nice to have. I just checked, just did like a little Instagram story. Instagram is my thermometer, told me 16 degrees, and it's only 7 p.m. So I'm just keep bringing up the temperature. Coldest place in Sri Lanka, and uh, this over here to our left is the restaurant. Yeah, you can just go. Yesterday was actually quite busy. Today looks like it's just us. Let's see what we get. Alrighty, as you see, the dinner is in full swing. So it's kind of like four or five course. Starts off with a little appetizer. Our soup was amazing, seafood soup. So every day the menu changes. And generally the stay here is kind of all inclusive. Have lunch, have dinner, breakfast. Amazing on the balcony as you have seen, but I have to tell you, Everything was good. The sea seafood soup was one of the best I've had. But this lamp, unexpectedly. Yesterday I had steak, was also good, but the lamp. That. We got some curry. This is string hopper. You put some of this on top. Delicious some sauce. Mm -hmm. Some egg hopper. Good morning. So, guys, kicking off the next day here in Nurulia. And uh, the hotel has like a nice sauna. Want to really check it out later. But wanted to find a proper gym, and surprisingly, here uh, this area is called Little England, and I can really tell why. Really nice gym, nice workout to kick off the morning. Gonna head back right now for breakfast. So just coming out here on a random roof of the gym to give you an idea of the town. I mean, look at this. We got all colonial style British buildings. Generally, most of the infrastructure actually here in the town looks like that, which I find absolutely fascinating. There's everywhere signs like Little England, this and that, and overall, like a lot of golf courses, the horse track. Let's not fall off here right now. Bit out of breath, good workout. That is the Nuralia post office. Been around, been around for a while. And so, what a time it has been in a place that sometimes I forget where I am. Just to wrap up a little bit the experience, once again, overlooking Nuwara Elia. So, first of all, obviously, as always, got a world to see style, always looking for the most unique, most interesting experiences. And uh, in terms of the home, uh, the casa, Seriously, probably the most unique and interesting boutique hotel experience, considering it's a small place, eight rooms, um, used to be somebody's house, and I just thought about it, like 101 years old. So when it was 100 years old, somebody sold it. And uh, yeah, that's what they made out of it. And I think it's an amazing time to, uh, amazing way to preserve the building, to preserve the history, service amazing, a room amazing. I mean, you have seen it all obviously it's like a very very let's say exclusive Sri Lanka experience with the horse riding with the tea plantations is truly very different from the rest of Sri Lanka which is more tropical more let's say also like uh, candy that's where we're gonna go right now uh, very different history very different focus of the region very different weather especially I think that is the biggest part that throws you off in the evening when you're sitting in your big jacket and you're like Wait a minute, I'm in Sri Lanka? Yeah, 
and then you walk into the town you see all the british colonial buildings you go to the tea plantations and you see that the history in many ways it's authentically sri lankan but in other ways it's also nice to see how they're very proud of uh, the different periods of this country they're very proud of their tea production and i've checked for sri lanka is the third biggest tea exporter in the world but if you consider it kind of like per capita or let's say per size of population and the size of uh, the country sri lanka is a small island nation and they're right behind i think china and kenya i believe definitely china number one tea exporter but you know one point however many billion people plus such a huge territory and then you have the small island nation just absolutely dominating the tea industry and um, yeah definitely probably for the rest of my life my favorite tea coming from Ceylon the old name for Sri Lanka and New I I was sure I, I was sure I would enjoy it but I wasn't sure how interesting it would be and I have to say it's definitely one of my favorites in the whole country especially as a contrast to the beaches to the tropical destinations and yeah this has been Noor Elia. If you're new here, by any chance, you're on the channel I talk about building a life of freedom around the world. This is what Got a World to See stands for. And Sri Lanka, for me, so far, always has been a place to kind of like adventure travel a little bit, stay here for a couple of weeks, fast travel. But now on my second visit, I actually realized that this is also a place where I could see myself even a little bit longer. I am certain this won't be my last visit, especially after just seeing how much different places it has to offer. Like, let's say, you're based off for a month around the beaches and then you just want to change up the vibe without having to leave the country you can go into such a different environment and um, also just in terms of like let's say if you stay longer here internet connectivity in Noir Ali, at least over here has been fantastic which is not that easy in Sri Lanka it's actually quite tricky often in Colombo even it's hard to get a really fast wi-fi connection and uh, generally pretty peaceful not too much going on in the evenings even when you're next to the road barely anybody's on the street so a very peaceful quaint little town there's a lot of tourism especially if you're in the town you walk by the old post office i showed you walk around there's a big market lots of going on but on the outskirts outside of the main touristy hubs the life is real people are going about the day-to-day -day life uh, i'm just looking out at the tea plantations right now people are plucking the tea so the place is not just a tourist place it's a real sri lanka but a very different one so on that note you can join me on instagram if you want to see where i am right now and you too, got a world to see.